Hi, my name is Christy Neuroff. You are back again to tackle FRQ questions that have no stimulus. So let's dive right in today. Before we get started, let's go over a couple of important reminders for FRQs with no stimulus. If you'd like to join in with me today and tackle the question that I'm going over, you can download a PDF copy and work right alongside me. Feel free to pause the video at any point in time to take a time, take a moment to practice and write your answer and see if you're on the right track. As we're tackling FRQs with no stimulus, we will always remember to read the stem carefully. Make sure you know exactly what the question is asking so you are sure that your answer will address that question. Next, make note of any key vocabulary. That's gonna give you a hint of the kind of terms the AP graders will want to see in your answer. Next, take time to annotate the question. You are going to see me doing that today. I'm gonna to practice that with you. So you'll see what kind of words or terms I choose to focus in on. When you're doing your AP test or you're writing your answer, you can do this through underlining keywords or maybe starring a key concept you wanna come back to, or even circling a key concept you don't want to miss. Next, be specific in your answer. The more specific you can be using key vocabulary or real world examples, the more you'll show that you really know your stuff. And finally, pay attention to the verbs. Make sure you know whether the question is asking you to describe something or explain something or define something so that you give adequate information and address exactly what they want you to talk about. Let's dive into our question here today. The stem of the question says, in most countries, the concept of the state as a political unit is subject to the tensions between centrifugal and centripetal forces. So I'll pause right there. I've got a concept and I've got two vocab terms right here in the very first sentence of the stem. I'm gonna pay close attention to those things. Jumping back in, governments are often challenged by the devolutionary factors. Another concept here, more vocab, that challenge state sovereignty. So if I take a step back here, I notice that this question is all about what makes a state, centripetal and centrifugal forces, devolutionary factors, sovereignty. I'm telling myself this question is gonna be all about unit four and political geography. So taking some time with the STEM helps me focus on what is the overall concept or overall unit that I'll be addressing for the most part in my answer. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each piece of the question with you, and I will show you a sample answer. Now, it's important to note that this sample answer is not a complete answer. For the sake of space and time, I'll just give you some key concepts you could potentially discuss when answering each piece of the question. So let's dive in with part A. Part A says, define the concept of the multinational state. So define is pretty straightforward. You're going to answer the question in roughly one, maybe two sentences and get right to the point, making sure that your answer is a complete sentence. So in this case, I would say if this were a complete sentence, a multinational state is, and then go through the answer in one, maybe two sentences. So I've got a sample here for you that illustrates a potential answer. If I've defined in one to two sentences, I've given complete sentences, then I've done everything I need to do for part A and I'm ready to move on to part B. Part B says, explain how ethnicity can be a factor that leads to the devolution of a state. So the key words here are explain, ethnicity, and the concept of devolution of a state. Now, an explanation requires more thoughtful responses than definitions will. So I wanna have roughly three to five sentences here that make sure that I focus on that concept of ethnicity 
and how that may tie to the devolution of a state. Now, I've given you a sample here of what you could talk about. Again, a full and complete answer would be much longer than this, but this gives you an idea of what you could possibly write about. If I've done that effectively using key vocabulary, examples, full and complete sentences, then I'm ready to move on from part B. Part C, explain how communication technology plays an important role in the goals of devolutionary groups and democracy movements. There's quite a lot going on here. You can see that when I annotated this question, I focused in on several things. Communication technology, the fact that it's an explain, goals, devolutionary groups, democracy movements. So my answer needs to address each piece of that. Now I'll provide a sample answer for you here. Again, it would be a bit longer on the real test, but this gives you an idea of some of the things that I might want to include in my answer to show that I really know what I'm talking about and I've addressed each piece of the question. If I've done that, I can give myself a check mark here. I'm ready to move on to part D. D says, explain one way governments use communication infrastructure to limit the capabilities of devolutionary groups and democracy movements. So think to yourself, what words do you think I'm going to highlight here? What terms do you think are important? You can even pause the video and take a moment to annotate your own question and see what you think you should hone in on. Did you underline or circle or star the word explain? Did you pay close attention to one way governments use communication infrastructure or the word limit, devolutionary groups or democracy movements? Have you honed in on any of those things as important concepts that we're gonna to need to keep in mind as we write our answer? So it does say one way. I don't wanna have a big long list of many different things. I wanna focus on one thing. So a specific example I could use is what you see here, the blocking of information on the internet, for instance. Obviously my real answer would be much longer, three to five sentences around that length to really do a full explanation of this concept. If I've done that, I can give myself a check here. I'm ready to move on to part E. E says, explain how uneven development, so another important concept in AP Human Geography, within a state can act as a centrifugal force. So again, I've got these two key concepts here and I've gotten explain. I have a good idea of how much I need to write. So I might include something like, one part of the country being neglected economically and how that can make local residents uh, resentful. I would build on this with some specific real world examples perhaps and make sure that I've got a detailed explanation that includes the how. And I might even have that word because in my answer, which shows I'm explaining how something happens, how that uneven development acts as a centrifugal force. If I've done all of that, I can check mark part E and move on to part F. F states, describe, so we've got a different verb here. It's not yet another explain. Describe one centripetal force that governments can use to promote the state as a nation. So I've turned now to centripetal force. This is why it's really important to annotate the question because you've just been talking about centrifugal forces and you might be tempted or you might even be uh, so focused on that that you answer the question incorrectly because you haven't focused in on the specific term that they're using here in part F. So annotating can be a way to make sure that you don't miss those nuances between words that look very similar. A sample answer here might include the specific items I have listed, things like folklore, sports, holidays, military, traditions, using those things to promote political nationalism could be a potential answer. Now, again, you've noticed I've included some specific information here to show I know this information at a college level 
which is exactly what they're looking for. If I've done that, then I can check mark part F and move on to the final piece, which is part G. Part G says, for a multinational state facing the realities of devolution. So I'll pause there. We're focusing on multinational states. We're focusing on devolution. I'm going to compare. So this is a new verb here. We haven't had this yet. It's buried here at the very end. We are comparing the choice to create an autonomous region with the choice to maintain a unitary state. Notice that it seems like the most difficult part of the question is here towards the end. Sometimes that happens. So think of it as a good thing. You've already worked on this question for, for A through F. So you've had some time to really think about these concepts of states and devolution and um, unitary states and autonomous regions. All of that has been floating around in your mind here as you've written the rest of the question. So don't be worried if the end gets a little bit more complicated. They want to see, can you take your knowledge to the next level? Now, comparison is going to take more time and more effort than a simple definition. It may even take more time than a description or an explanation. So give yourself adequate time and space on your page to make sure that you address both pieces of the comparison. Just addressing one isn't enough to answer the question. So the choice here is between autonomous regions and unitary states. So my answer sample here, make sure to address both. And I would obviously have written a bit more on this um, if it were a full complete answer to really address that full comparison. But hopefully this gives you an idea of the direction you may want to go with your answer. Well, now that we've finished part G, we are here at the end with my final thoughts for today. So here are some things to think about as you tackle these FRQs with no stimuli. First, don't forget that success comes when you take time to understand the question. The most common mistake I see with students is that they jump right in, they're so excited to show what they know, and they don't really take the time to understand the question. They end up writing some beautiful information down, but it doesn't address the question, and therefore they miss out on the points. So take time to understand the question. Next, you show your depth of knowledge when you are specific. Use that AP vocabulary. Give uh, specific real world examples. That's a great way to elevate your answer and prove that you know this information at that AP level. Finally, don't forget, you've got this. You've had this extra practice. You're focusing, you're annotating. You have all the tools you need to be successful on the AP test. Thank you so much for joining me today. And don't forget, we've got more videos for you on how to tackle FRQs that do have stimuli. So be sure to tune in for those as well.